<laughs> hey there folks, my name is Alex. And I'm Meg. And we are the Slow Roamers. Over the past four months, we have been completely rebuilding this van from your basic Chevy Express 2500 delivery van into this kind of, uh, I don't know, two wheel drive overland van life machine, <laughs> I guess. It's been a ton of work and we are so excited to be finally finished the van and almost ready to move in. But before we do that, we just wanted to give you a quick tour of the van, show you what's up and um, what we've done and how she has changed. So welcome to the Betty 3.0 van tour. Hi guys, welcome to Betty's interior. Um, so I'm going to show you what Alex has been up to um, on the inside of the van for the last few months, making this a beautiful, cozy, awesome home that we just can't wait to live in. Um, so we'll start off with this unit here in our entryway. Um, this houses all of our water and the filtration system. Uh, so inside we've got three 20 liter dairy cans and a two stage water filtration system that um, we got from Clear Source. On top here is our sink. Um, now this is a huge upgrade from the last build. Uh, we installed a much larger sink, uh, which is gonna make uh, our lives a lot easier in terms of doing dishes, brushing teeth, that sort of thing. And we've also got this really fancy water spout that delivers water at really high pressure via our 12 volt water pump. And then on the face here, uh, we've got our switches. So one of the switches is re responsible for our exterior lights, the water pump, and then our interior overhead lights. Just below it, uh, we've got our hatch for our P funnel. Um, so having this P funnel is another one of those important upgrades for this build and it's going to make it possible for us to go pee in the middle of the night inside of the van. Um, so that's super handy when we're out in nature and it's just a little bit sketchy to go outside in the night, um, whether it's because of wildlife or it might be pouring rain or super windy. All right, so moving on to more of the inside of the van. Um, so as you can see, Alex has really capitalized on all of the space, um, building out storage in absolutely every nook and cranny. So starting off with over our cab, um, so he's used this space to build out a much larger pantry for food storage for me. So in the last build, we didn't have a ton of space for food storage. And now I have this epic pantry that, you know, I will fill to the brim with food, but it's going to be awesome. We're going to be able to stay out for so much longer and stay fed. Now that food storage includes uh, this fridge, which we locate right between our seats. Same as the last build, uh, but now we've got uh, an upgraded uh, fridge from Set Power. We tested it last night and it is way quieter when it cycles and it stays much colder. And it seems like the seal on it is a lot better. We don't get as much condensation that we did in the last fridge. Over here is our closet. So that's where we keep all of our jackets and coats as well as my full length mirror. Above it, we've just got some more storage. We're not really sure what we're gonna use all of this additional for storage for just yet as we haven't fully packed the van. Um, below is where we keep our Boxio toilet. So this is another huge upgrade in this van build. In the last one, we did not have a toilet. So this is gonna make it a lot more convenient to go to the bathroom uh, when we're in a pinch. Um, over here, we've got our stove top. This again, is a huge transition from the last build. In the last build, we used a single burner induction top. Um, now, not only was the single burner limiting for all of the cooking that I wanted to do, but the power draw was so huge that we really couldn't stay in place and do all the cooking that I wanted to for very long um, because it would just drain the battery even when we had full sun for the solar. We changed to propane. Um, and so Alex had to do all of the gas fitting in here. And on this wall here is where we have our switches for the propane line. Now it was really important that Alex installed this switch so um, that we could just shut off um, the flow completely when we're not using the propane. Um, we wanted to do that just for um, safety reasons. We didn't want there to be a flow of propane coming inside the van when we're not cooking or using our propane heater, which lives right below 
below here. Now, we didn't have on-demand heat in the last build. All we had was our tiny wood stove. Um, so this time around, uh, we are much better prepared for the cold and the elements and we'll be able to sit in place um, for a lot longer and not be dictated by the weather or how much power we're using. Uh, so Alex also built a bunch more storage underneath our fridge and underneath the passenger seat. Again, we're not quite sure what lives under here, but all of the storage um, was the name of the game in this version of the build. Above the new stove, I've got a couple of awesome little nooks. Um, one is the spice rack, which I love and everybody that pokes their head into the van love. So next to the spice rack, as you can see, we've got our dishes storage and our AeroPress storage. So Alex built this custom so that it fits all of our dishes exactly. So they can just slot in here um, and there's no movement and they won't fall out when we're on a rough road. Tested this out yesterday on some pretty rough roads and there was no rattle and none of the dishes fell out. So success. Around the stove and sink, I've got these awesome new countertops. There's so much more space on the countertop so I don't feel like I'm crowded when I'm doing any meal prepping or coffee making. And it's made out of this beautiful recycled wood um, that Alex was gifted by his dad. And yeah, it just really ties in the whole aesthetic in here. So moving on, as you can see under our couch area, there is a new platform here. So this is not only a whole bunch extra storage, but it also makes it so that when we are sitting on the couch, we have a comfortable area to rest our feet. If we didn't have this extra platform here, my feet especially would be dangling, which would not be ideal. As I said earlier, our Propex propane forced air heater lives down here. And beside that, we've got a dedicated place for dirty laundry, which we did not have in the last build. So yeah, in this build, we were able to be really thoughtful about all of the little nooks that we wanted to build because we had six months of travel full time under our belt where we really figured out what worked and what didn't and what was missing. Another thing that was missing from the last build was a place that we could just put all of our devices and charge them. So we've got this uh, cupboard right here and Alex wired it up so there's all the charging outlets that we need so we can just shove all of our devices in there when um, they need to be charged and that saves a bunch of the space from being cluttered with all of our electronics. So next, um, Tiny Tim, which uh, you guys probably remember from the last build. We still love Tiny Tim, even though we have a, an on-demand heat source in this build. It's so awesome to just be able to generate our own heat from what we collect from nature. And it also creates such lovely ambiance in the van when we're sort of stuck in, inside in the cold and the rain. So in the last build, what we found was that the um, area that we put Tim in was way too big. We absolutely didn't need it to be such a huge space. So this time we've shoved him in a little nook um, and it's heat shielded, creates way less footprint for the stove. And yeah, we're super happy with how this turned out. Um, we think it really adds a nice different design look and feel to the van. Underneath Tiny Tim, got our wood storage. So first cabinet here is for all the larger wood pieces that Alex processes with this chainsaw. And then down below, we've got a little small nook for all the kindling. So yeah, we can really get prepared when we um, are able to find some deadfall in nature and process all that wood. So it's ready to go when we're ready to fire up Tim. Surrounding my head right now is all of our overhead storage that Alex was able to build right into the new high top that we installed. Um, so all of this storage is able to house all of our clothing and toiletries. And uh, yeah, so all of our clo clothes fit in here um, and we might put toiletries back here. And on my side, I have a little bit of extra space for some additional clothing. I have all the clothes, Alex has all the camera gear. It's a compromise, right? <laughs> and right over here, this is the area of the van that I'm super excited about. Alex built me my very own 
plant shelf. In the last build, I had a little nook for plants and then the rest ended up on the dash, which Alex absolutely hated. So now I've got this little shelf. I'm not sure what's gonna go up here, whether it's gonna be some little succulents or maybe some herbs, but I'm really excited to have some green in here um, and uh, yeah. We were able to reuse the bed platform from Betty 2.0. You might remember that this is Alex's folding bed system. So in the daytime, it converts to a functional couch seating area. And then at night, we pull it out and it transitions to um, a six foot five by four feet bed. So yeah, Alex is tall and he has all the foot room um, that he needs. And in the daytime, when we push the bed into the couch, we have all this space to, to live in and um, do everything that we need to do. I am not entirely sure what's happening with the audio right now, but if you guys can hear it, you would notice that it is started to absolutely dump rain here, um, which means it's going to be kind of uh, unpleasant to do an exterior tour right now. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to leave this spot and head to another spot that um, hopefully on the other side of the island, there's no rain right now, and we will do an exterior tour there. So. What he didn't tell you was that we filmed this whole entire tour and he turned off the audio. So now we're doing it again. Yeah, this is uh, <laughs> tour number two of the day. <laughs> okay, so during that entire van tour, we were having kind of uh, little audio issues. And unfortunately, when I got to the electrical system segment, the audio was total trash and completely unusable. So I'm just going to do a quick rundown of the electrical system before we go. Let's get after it. So this electrical system right here is all by Rare Earth Element Solar or ReSolar. They're a solar component company based in Quebec, Canada. I've been working with them for the past year and a half or so, and I really, really love their product. So if you're building your own system, make sure to go and check out ReSolar.ca. And um, they have a really great product line that they've been slowly um, refining. This system, I'm really, really excited on the size of it. First off, it's quite small. Uh, it's smaller than the system that we had before. We have a 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery that is also self-heating, which is really great for Canadian winters. Not that we really stay up in Canada during the winter. We have a 1500 watt inverter charger and a 40 amp DC-DC MPPT. I'm really excited about the fact that there are so many components that have been combined in this system. So our 200 amp hour battery is actually the footprint of a usual 100 amp hour battery. There's just been more lithium cells uh, stuffed into one casing. So our 1500 watt inverter charger, of course, it takes 12 volt power and converts it to 120 volt. But also if we plug into shore power, it will charge our batteries at 40 amps, which is you know really, really fantastic. And as far as I know, it's about the smallest inverter charge that you can get. Our DC-DC MPPT just takes um, power from our starting battery and charges our house battery at 40 amps, but it also works as an MPPT as well. We lose a little bit of efficiency on the MPPT side, but I think I'm not really worried about it. Everything aside from that is pretty straightforward. We have uh, a larger, higher amperage fuse block right here, and then a lower amperage 12 volt fuse block right here that just feeds all the systems uh, in the back of the van. And that is pretty much the entire electrical system. It's quite small, but quite robust. And uh, I'm really thrilled on how good this system has come together and um, how small it is, so yeah.
this is a slightly drier location than before. So the first thing that I'm going to address is a question that I get from a lot of people when they first see Betty. Is it four wheel drive? No, it is not. And usually the next question is, are you going to switch over to four wheel drive or do a four wheel drive swap? No, we are not. And I'll tell you why. We value adventure and we value traveling and moving about. And all that costs money. If we were to do a, a four wheel drive swap, you know, we could be looking at anywhere from two to maybe $5,000. Most of the places that we wanna go don't actually require four wheel drive. So to save money and to adventure more, we're just gonna keep a two wheel drive and we have the clearance that we need. With that being said, let's uh, continue on. So Betty is sitting on 285, 75, 16 Firestone Destination MT2s. These tires were actually originally on my Toyota pickup Thomas and we wanted slightly bigger tires and now Betty is an inch taller and um, looks a lot more badass if you ask me, which I'm pretty happy about. Going to the front, um, I built this custom uh, winch bumper for Betty. I wanted a bumper that uh, basically allowed the very best approach angle as possible. So what I did is I actually cut about six to eight inches off of the frame horns so that um, I could keep the, the front of the bumper like really only three inches out from the grill. We have a 10,000 pound uh, rugged ridge uh, winch hidden in behind the bumper or in behind the grill here. And then of course, a uh, nice big row of lights. We've got some knob sights, uh, three inch pods, some diode dynamic uh, three inch spots, and this diode dynamic, um, it's like a flood light bar. <laughs> so I guess overall, I think it gives Betty's front end a real badass look and um, really does improve her approach angle. Now we can kind of get ourselves out of sticky situations. If we... Coming around to this side, uh, you'll see this kind of um, electrical port thing. This was actually from Betty 2.0. This is our 120 volt shore power plug right here. And then this is an additional solar panel plug in the event that we carried a mobile solar panel. This will plug right into uh, the wires coming down from the roof. And then we can add an additional solar panel. So if you know Chevy's well enough, or at least Chevy Expresses, you'll know that the white uh, factory paint often just chips off and will come off in like sheets. And we were starting to have that exact same issue on Betty and that just wasn't gonna do. So we decided to repaint the van in a texturized Raptor liner and go with like a two-tone color scheme. Um, I really wanted to kind of keep a retro look to the van. I prefer old vehicles and this kind of goes back to the older vehicle roots. And also we wanted to stay with like a, just a steel donut for a rim, um, just because it has that kind of classic look. You also notice that we've installed some windows in the side of Betty. These windows right here, um, we actually got these out of a uh, canopy that we got. Um, it was just a used canopy that we found on Facebook Marketplace. We bought it for 60 bucks and we got four of these windows and uh, they fit perfectly. They are the smallest window that we could find because we had a very limited space that we could fit them in. And they just allow a little bit more light to get into our living space, which kind of opens it up. Also, we put in this large tilting window. This was kind of like the start of the Betty 3.0 refit. And this window opens so that we can get some um, airflow from the side of the van and also be able to kind of see out the side uh, because prior to this, we didn't have any visibility on the driver's side of the van. And yeah, it, it really just opens up the interior of the van, breaks up the big wall and it's really nice to have. So coming to the back of the van, you'll see this custom made uh, rear bumper that I built. We of course um, wanted to be able to store as much as possible. Also, uh, I have the intention of eventually putting a um, auxiliary tank where the spare used to be. So I had to put the spare up on a swing out. As well, we have a swing out with, you know, our storage box there. These open really easy. Swing out of the way of the doors completely and allow us to get into the back without much fuss. Our storage box is uh, kind of like a big utility box. We open up here, 
obviously got our axe, we've got a whole bunch of recovery gear, so uh, we've got straps, um, like a, a jack pad, we've got jumper cables, extra fuel, uh, got some spare oil, everything that we need to kind of keep the van going or pull it out or whatever. Also, this is the storage area for our 20 pound propane cylinder. And on the cylinder, there is a remote uh, 12 volt ball valve so that we can turn the gas on and off from inside of the van. Megan explained it prior to me being out here talking about it, that it's just a safety feature so that we don't have any more gas coming into the vehicle uh, when we don't want it to. As well, we have the capability of carrying um, spare fuel on top of the box. Probably not gonna do this too much, but we just carry an extra jerry can up top in case we are going way out into the middle of nowhere and just want a little bit of extra fuel. As well, I have the capability of carrying a little five liter jerry can right here uh, in the event that we want like 25 liters of fuel. So you'll see right here that we have our shovel storage. Uh, we just carry a big shovel with us because it's really good for leve leveling ourselves out on sand, digging ourselves out if we ever get stuck, which we haven't really got stuck um, except for once in the snow. And it's also a poop shovel. The shovel storage is of course mounted to a ladder, which allows us access to the roof. And that is important because one, I need to clean the panels, but in addition to that, we also have a functionality of the panels that not everyone has, which the panels are tiltable. So I'll climb up there and, and show you what they do. So one thing that's really important to us is the ability to stay in one spot for a long period of time. And of course we need to charge our batteries while we're sitting in place and we don't want to just like run the vehicle. So I made um, these, pan these panels tiltable so that we can really increase the efficiency of our solar collection. So all I need to do is remove these pins. So once these pins are removed, I can just flip the panel up like this. The panels are tilted. So this will just allow a slightly better uh, solar collection wherever we are. And we can also actually take the pins out of the front of the panel and tilt it in the opposite direction in the event that we're pointed south or north and need to point towards the sun. Also, I forgot to mention, um, I built the, the whole rack out of aluminum just to keep the, the weight down. Uh, it's responsible for holding 220 watts of solar as of right now. I will be getting an additional uh, 110 uh, solar panel from Rare Earth Element Solar. We will have a total of 330 watts on the roof, which should keep our batteries charged, no problem. We also have a set of traction boards up here in a convenient to get to location. Uh, we haven't used those too often, but when we have, they've been totally awesome. If you guys don't yet have a pair of full-size traction boards like this, go out and get them because Honestly, with a two-wheel drive van like ours, it's like having four-wheel drive sometimes. Um, you can get out of a lot, and we've saved a lot of people with those traction boards, so yeah. So with the addition of the high top, which I haven't actually yet talked about, we put a 17-inch uh, TV top, high top from High Top Vans. Friends Micah and Lindsay started a company in Washuga, Washington, and they're installing uh, fiberglass tops onto Chevy Expresses and Ford Econolines and some other vans as well. So if you guys need a high top, uh, check out High Top Vans. I will put the link right here. So with the additional height in the back, we wanted to maximize our storage. So we actually uh, put the bed up a lot higher, which I think Megan explained um, prior in the interior tour. So that means that we have a lot of storage under the bed. You can see now we have plenty of space for tools, for recreational gear. We have a stand-up paddleboard we'll put under there, extra food, water, just tons of extra stuff. So we're really thrilled about how much we're able to store under the bed now. We have so much room to put stuff. Yeah, stuff. Coming around to this side of the van, you'll see that this door that normally would have had a large sheet of glass in there no longer does. The reason we did this is because these windows, we couldn't open them. And as I've mentioned before, we had a, a ventilation problem in the van. And um, so what we did is uh, I took out the window, I replaced it with a big sheet of eighth inch aluminum, and then cut in a hole and put in this RV window that has a bottom portion that can tilt. 
and that just increases the airflow in the van way more. And we've already tested it out, uh, just putting the, the fan on and having the windows open and it sucks air through there so good. We are very, very excited for going to Baja this year because we're not going to overheat, which is great. Up here, we have a large awning, which for some reason Megan doesn't love, but I love awnings. And um, we didn't have a location to uh, mount an awning to because I didn't want to have the roof rack uh, coming down over. So what I did is I made custom brackets that actually go through the fiberglass. And there's a sandwich plate on either side. And then they uh, clamp with four bolts so that it doesn't put that much stress on the fiberglass itself. And then the whole thing is actually sitting right on top of the drip rail. And that just makes sure that there's no like, you know, vertical stress coming down. As well, we took the wind visor or sticker shield as I like to call it and put it right over the door. So when we open the door, We can keep the door open in the rain and no water actually comes through the crack that's right here. Some things to note that we're probably going to upgrade in the future. Because we've gone to the larger tires, we're actually going to re-gear the van to four tens. And um, I'm considering putting a Chevy 14 bolt full float rear axle in there, hopefully with a golf locker in it so that, um, you know, when we're off-roading, uh, Hopefully the rear end locks up ever so often. So when we are back in San Diego, we're gonna to go to Weld Tech Design and put in their three inch progressive leaf in the rear just to uh, hold the weight and also kind of soften up the ride, which we are stoked about. So something that we failed to mention on the interior tour was one last thing. And this is uh, something that I really suggest for literally everyone in a van. We do have a swivel seat in the van. Then what I've done is I welded a bracket to the B pillar so that we could put a login style table. And now I have a place to work and edit videos and stuff like that. So this has been a real game changer um, for life in the van. Really opens up the space and just allows more seating and a lot more comfort. So I would really suggest doing something like this if you are able to do it. Well, that's pretty much the entire van. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope that this tour somehow inspired you guys to go out and build your own van and go and see some cool stuff. Uh, it's been a real journey getting this far. There's been a lot of work and time put into this thing, but we are both incredibly excited to get out on the road and go and travel. We are um, T minus 10 days before we leave for our winter trip. If you guys have been following for a long time and have seen our previous travels, we're gonna be getting right back into that and back into adventuring. So stay tuned, I guess. And until next time, remember, remember to, to keep, keep on, on roaming. roaming. <laughs> <laughs>